Welcome back everybody to another episode of Costume Anatomy. For those of you that don't know, this is a series on the channel where we break down hero and villain costumes, going over how they are made in order to work well with their quirks, how it fits with their personality, what they symbolize to the public, and whether or not the costume has made an impact on hero society for the better or worse. And oh boy, did this costume really impacted the My Hero Academia world in a big way. Of course, with that said, today's Costume Anatomy is all about about the R-rated hero, Midnight, and both of her jaw-dropping costumes. Let's begin by going over her quirk and how her original costume that's featured mostly in the My Hero Academia Vigilante spinoff worked with it. Now Midnight's quirk called Somnibulus allows her to secrete an aroma slash scent from her body that can put her opponents to sleep and it's mostly effective against men. With that said, her hero costume needs to be tailored in a way where her quirk can be used in the most effective effective way possible. When she attended UA back in the day, her first costume lacked a heavy amount of coverage on her body. Her costume consisted of only a mask, a vest that covered partly her chest, a trench coat, some thigh high heels, and a utility belt that holds her whip. This version of her costume, funny enough, is appropriately called Midnight Birthday Suit Style. Yes, Midnight in this costume is practically naked. Also for those of you wondering, I am not really counting her debut costume that we see in the anime because that is an anime only costume design. And in the manga, during that interview, we never get to see what her actual debut costume looked like until we got to the Vigilantes manga, where we actually get to see her first hero costume, which is her birthday suit style costume. In the words of a third year Midnight, she states that her costume is bold yet practical. She needed to support both her quirk and fighting style. Style. So this costume design serves both purposes, that being functional beauty. Given her quirk, in her case, it's easy to see why this costume suited her best. With the majority of her skin being exposed, it would be easy for her to just use her quirk while in combat. Her trench coat could easily be used to fan her aroma to targets who are a little farther away, and of course her whip would also be used to give her the edge on opponents who keep their distance. But with a costume like this, you can see why it was deemed very controversial in the world of My Hero Academia, and is most likely the reason why she was given the title of R-rated hero, and is also the main reason why the government put forward the Hero Costume Skin Exposure Limitation Act. Her first hero costume was stated to be the only reason why regulations were made to limit the amount of skin that can be exposed for hero costumes. And what makes this whole Costume Limitation Act even funnier is that through UA's Uniform Subsidy Program, where students are granted free costumes, someone had to have seen Midnight's request form for what she wanted her costume to look like and just paid absolutely no mind to it unless she pulled a Deku and made her costume herself practically and not through the Uniform Subsidy Program. Because of this act being put in place, this did cause a lot of problems for heroes whose quirks rely on their skin to be exposed in order to function in the best way possible. For example, Momo Yayorozu would have made her costume even more revealing if it wasn't for the restrictions on the amount of exposed skin that a costume could show. We see that this restriction proves to be a major problem for heroes whose quirks need a certain amount of skin exposed to be effective since when she creates huge items out of her body, it tends to rip and tear apart her costume, thus needing her to waste more lipids on creating a new type for her costume which could have been used to make more items for a battle if it weren't for that restriction. So this would mean that during a battle, Creati needs to take a moment to repair her costume which could prove to be detrimental depending on the situation and no, zippers would not fix Momo's costume design because that would be even more time consuming to have to zip and unzip her costume every time she creates something during battle and no villain is dumb enough to just let them their opponent do that without taking advantage of it. So thanks to Midnight's first hero costume, it greatly impacted all of hero society with the Costume Limitation Act, and now tons of heroes are at some pretty big disadvantages or deal with minor inconveniences with their costumes not being able to function perfectly with their quirks, all because they have quirks that manifest things out of their bodies. In an interview regarding how she made a real impact in the hero industry with her costume, she 
States, in light of my particular quirk, an elaborate costume would just get in the way. That's true for many of us. So it's not about a need to be sexy. Any resulting sexiness is just a byproduct of striving to get the job done. Of course, with the Hero Costume Skin Exposure Limitation Act in place, Midnight needed to come up with an entirely new costume design, thus giving us Midnight's Pro Hero Costume. This is the only other costume from her after her birthday suit style that we ever get to see in the series. This costume's updated look features a breastless black leotard, ultra super thin white tights that is actually flesh colored in the manga, thigh high stockings, knee high heels, is it getting hot in here or is it just me, a utility belt that holds her support items such as her whips of love, for range attacks, and a feather fan to help fan her aroma to opponents that keep their distance. For her whips of love, it seems to be just one item that can turn itself into either a flogger or a whip, but hey, like she says in the omake showcasing her items, this is what she's into. All of the items in her arsenal pick up traces of her sleep inducing scent and flings it precisely wherever she aims. Without her support items, she can aim her scent decently, but the support items give her accuracy and range a boost. Personally, every time I see Midnight in her pro hero costume, I drop to my knees. Now what makes Midnight's pro hero costume so interesting is how it gets around the Hero Costume Skin Exposure Limitation Act in a really cool and dare I say sexy way. As I stated earlier, her tights are actually flesh colored in the manga and matches her actual skin color. So you can only imagine that when she pulls up on villains, a lot of them are going to be blind sided by what looks to be a naked woman with lingerie charging at them. So not only does this costume still retain that element of surprise that her birthday suit style had for catching villains and people off guard, but her tights were made so thin that while in combat when she needs to use her quirk, she can easily tear parts of her tights and release her scent. Though the only real downside to this costume is that she does need to take that small amount of time to tear her costume apart. Thus giving her that minor setback of having one arm not being used in the fight due to her using said arm to tear her costume apart. But despite that law being in place and that minor setback with her new pro hero costume, she still managed to work around it in a way that still benefits her fighting style and doesn't cause too much of a hindrance on her. Both of Midnight's costumes have a very dominatrixy look to them that reflects her personality. She's admitted before that she has a sadistic side and enjoys dominating others, but I'm pretty sure without her outright stating that, if you just watch one episode that features Midnight in it, you pick up that vibe almost instantly. So while editing, I almost forgot to mention that there was a variation of Midnight's pro hero costume in the Vigilante's manga that's featured in volume 12. With this variation, only adding a draping cape-like coat onto her base costume, giving her this crisp military style look to her, which funny enough, this design actually doubles down on that dominatrixy look that she is known for. So all in all, these two costume designs are very fitting for her. Though her original costume effectively changed hero society in terms of it being so outrageous that a new law had to be made, both costumes still represent something heroic even though she's viewed as a sort of sex symbol to the masses. Even though for some, Midnight being a sex symbol can be viewed as a bad thing, she herself uses it to her advantage and fully embraces embraces that through her personality, costume, and hero work. With that said, I hope that even though we didn't dive too deep into Midnight herself, that this episode of Costume Anatomy was able to show just how important these costumes can be to the world of My Hero Academia and its characters, as well as how sometimes they are used to build upon the world of My Hero Academia in interesting ways. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on Midnight and her costume, and like always, thank you all for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the video then be sure to Detroit smash that like button below as well as share this video with your friends. It greatly helps the channel out a ton. And if you are new to the channel and you like My Hero Academia content then be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell to join the Kitaroki Hero Academia to become my hero. Again thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.